each and every one of you, tourism management students. Welcome to our class, Accommodation and Operations Management. So for today's lesson, we are going to talk about accommodation and hospitality services. So this will be our first topic, this preliminary term in our class. So let's proceed. So for the introduction, it says here, accommodation presents a base from which tourists can engage in the process of staying at a destination. So even before, we've already talked about the term accommodation in your previous subjects in tourism management. But to recall the term accommodation, it refers again to a room, building, or lodging which provides shelter for a person to stay, sleep, or live. So technically speaking, ito yung mga pinupuntahan natin, ito yung mga pinag natin kapag tayo is pupunta sa isang lugar. So other term for accommodation is lodging. Okay? So temporary lodging. Accommodation is counted as an element of the wider hospitality sector. So, due to the trend and due to globalization nowadays, accommodation is one of the vital or let's say the focal point of hospitality and tourism industry. So, it says here that it has emerged as the focal point for hosting of guests and visitors through the ages. So, bakit sinabi ditong focal point for hosting of guests and visitors. Kasi when we say focal, it means it is a center of interest. Aside from the destination itself, we are also referring to accommodation as our center of interest. Bakit? Because dun tayo magstay, di ba? Dun tayo pupunta, dun tayo magpapahinga. And in return, we have to pay for a fee. Para doon sa mga services na ipoprovide sa atin nung mismong accommodation. And sa, sa mga services na yun, it can, um, it can be included yung mga food and beverage services, laundry services, housekeeping services, transportation, and valet and parking services. So, the hospitality sector. So, even before, napag-aaralan na din natin, what is the term hospitality? So hospitality can be considered as a noun or as a or as an adjective rather. So it means it is a friendly or generous reception and entertainment of guests. The way we welcome our guests, the way we interact with them, the way we entertain them is what we call hospitality. But on the other hand, hospitality also can be a term for businesses or establishments that offer food drinks or let's say accommodation to the guests so according here hospitality is considered to be the core of tourism where there is an involvement of the consumption of food drink along with homely accommodation so ano nga daw ba yung nature ng hospitality of course it involves hosting and hospitality or being hospitable the moment na pumasok si guest sa ating hotel, sa accommodation, um, the guest should feel that he or she is welcome. That is why sinasabi din natin that the face and the heart of the hotel is the front office. Kasi di ba, pagpasok natin ng hotel aside from the guard or the security guard, si front office or si front office agent ang mag -e entertain sa atin. Kung baga sila yung ating first um, interaction pagpasok natin ng hotel. And nowadays, hospitality has become a commercialized experience. Bakit siya sinabing commercialized? Because um, sinabi nga natin kanina that um, sa kapalit, kapalit ng mga services na pinoprovide natin is that we have to pay for those services na kinonsume natin. And syempre, yung pagbayad natin ng mga nakonsume natin na yun, uh, marami siyang way. It can be through credit card, it can be through debit card, or cash. Okay, so next. The historical roots, or ano nga ba yung pinagmulan ng tinatawag natin na hospitality industry. So, this commercialized transaction has its historical roots in the alehouses of medieval times, which were followed by the emergence of coaching inns on long-distance journeys and public houses. 
So, ano ba yung sinasabi dyan na ill houses? Okay? So, si ill houses, ito yung mga tinatawag natin na taverns or yung mga inns nung araw. So, nung wala pang hotel, ang tawag sa kanila is tavern or inns. So, kung i-recall natin, when we say taverns, these are the establishments na nagbebenta sila ng alcoholic beverages and they are also accepting guests doon sa mismong establishment. Ibig sabihin, aside from drinking um, alcoholic beverages such as beer, yung mga whiskey na yan, mga brandy na yan, they can also stay sa hotel for an overnight stay or even um, longer nights. So, aside from that, pwede rin natin siyang tawagin as inns. So, another term na na-mention dito is yung coaching inns. So, as you can see in the picture on the left side, si coaching inns is nag-originate siya sa Britain. So, doon is ang tawag nila doon is a small hotel. Bakit siya tinawag na coaching inns? Because um, ito yung mga hotels kung saan uh, malapit siya sa mga tao na nanggagaling or let's say, pag nagta-travel, ito yung mga hotels kung saan nadadaanan nila. So, it is a small hotel in Britain used in the past by people traveling carriages pulled by horses. So, kitang-kita naman sa picture that um, somehow, ito yung mga travelers noong unang panahon at ang kanilang mode of transportation is through um, horses o yung tinatawag na carriages. So, instead na mag-travel sila ng mas mahaba, dito sila nagstay sa mga coaching inns. So, most likely, it is a small hotel na ang rooms lang niya is around 20 to 50 rooms. So, it says here that it was not until the mid-17th century that the idea of hotel developed in Paris and this subsequently continued in 18th century London. So, after the medieval period na sinasabi natin na nag-come up noong 5th to 15th century, um, after noon, dito na umusbong yung idea ng pag-develop, pagtatayo ng mga hotels kung saan naganap siya noong mid-17th century sa Paris and eventually no 18th century sa London naman siya nangyari. So, dito na umusbong yung mga malalaking hotels, nag-develop na yung mga hotels in terms of their architectural um, design and of course yung kanilang mga services na pwedeng i-offer. Next one is the accommodation sector. So, dahil nga sa mga um, past developments, and of course, due also to the, um, let's say, modernization, globalization na nararanasan natin, nagkaroon din ang development with regards to the transportation and communication sector. Kasi di ba before yung mga roads is hindi pa established, yung, um, let's say, hindi pa safe sa lansangan na mag-travel because of the, um, let's say, mga crimes, yung mga thefts na nangyayari, ngayon is nagkaroon na ng magandang transportation services na hindi lang through horses tayo pwedeng sumakay but instead may mga may mga trains, may mga coaches, may mga bus na or even mga private cars na pwede natin sakyan. And of course, the communication sector also evolved. So, aside from that, dahil nga sa trend ngayon, yung mga international travel is also increasing. Dahil alam naman natin, one of the greatest contributor of tourism industry is yung mga business and leisure travelers. Of course, kapag business, um, from the word itself, business purposes, it's, um, it's about kung meron silang mga agenda sa particular country na yun, sa particular lugar na yun. And for the leisure travelers, um, all they want is to enjoy, relax, explore the place, also. The next one is the difference between the US market and the European market. So, ano nga ba pinagkaiba nila with regards sa accommodation sector? So, of course, nung unang panahon, um, sa US, or with regards to the US market, says here, modern concepts of the accommodation or the so-called hotel business developed from America from the beginning of 20th century. So, reinterpreting the older tradition of ad hoc development 
seen previously. So, ano ba yung sinasabing ad hoc development? So, that is needed or as needed or as necessary development na kailangan natin. So, in US market, ang mga nagsumikat na hotel is yung tinatawag natin na Marriott Hotels, Four Season Hotel. Na ang nangyari dito, yung mga hotel products nila or sa, sila mismo, they are being characterized by fierce competition. Ibig sabihin, sa US market, yung competition with regards sa mga hotel accommodation is nagiging matindi. So, ginagawa nila, they're offering a lot of uh, marketing strategies during that time para nang sa ganun is makapagsabayan sila or makipagsabayan sila dun sa kanilang mga competitors. So, for European market, sinasabi dyan, Europe still enjoys the largest hotel capacity of any region in the world. So, although capacity growth has considerably lagged the rest of the world, so sinasabi dyan na they are still enjoying. Kung baga, may enjoyment pa din pagdating sa um, pagta-travel, pagdating sa pagpili ng ating mga accommodation. Kasi si Europe, it is known to be, um, let's say, isa rin sa mga pinupuntahan talaga ng mga turista. At dahil maraming turista ang pumupunta sa kanila, of course, they also need a lot of accommodation establishments such as hotels. So, on the other hand, Europe hotel structures are typically older and not open to transformation in order to meet the standards of particular branded concept. Kasi ba diba, sa Europe, they are more likely na um, i-embrace nila, bigyan nila ng significance or importance yung tinatawag na culture and history. That is why yung kanilang mga hotel, hindi na tayo magtataka if their hotels are um, culturally themed or historically themed na hindi basta-basta pwedeng baguhin, hindi basta-basta pwedeng i-renovate. Because as I've mentioned, we need also to respect kung ano man yung kanilang culture, yung kanilang mga traditions, lalong-lalo na on how they design their architectural establishments. The accommodation sector as a global phenomenon and operational issues. So, dito sinasabi lang yung term na globalization. Ano ba yung term na globalization? Even before, di ba? Paulit-ulit natin siyang naririnig. So, globalization means it is a process by which yung ating mga ideas, yung mga goods and services natin is kumakalat all throughout the world. So, ma'am, paano siya kakalat? Para, paano siya mai-spread all throughout the world? Of course, through the interaction and integration. Sino-sino, ma'am? Of course, with the interaction and integration of the people. ba diba? Yung mga tao, yung mga kumpanya na yan. Of course, with collaboration ng mga government. And usually, si globalization nag-start siya noong 18th century. Okay, so let's proceed. So, this comprise, so dahil nga may globalization, this comprise yung mga global corporation which operate throughout the world such as Holiday Inn which franchises its brand across the world. So, some of you may be kilala si Holiday Inn or some of you ngayon lang siya narinig. So, si Holiday Inn is a UK-owned American brand of hotels and isa siya sa mga subsidiary or subordinates ng tinatawag natin na IHG or Intercontinental Hotel Groups na later on, mas maidi-discuss natin siya. So, si Holiday Inn, isa siyang US motel chain. Okay? US motel or in chain. Pag sinabing chain, ibig sabihin, madami sila. Usually, parang chain kadena, ba diba? Na um, kabit-kabit. So, etong chains na to, isa sila sa mga largest hotel Chains. Kaya nga corporation, di ba? So, isa sila sa mga malalaking hotel chains na according sa record or according sa research, meron na silang 1,173 active hotels all over the world. So, yun is nung um, September 2018 pa. But who knows na ngayon because of the trends and the emergence of hospitality and tourism industry mas dumami pa, mas nadagdagan 
and they also have 214,000 rentable rooms. So, ganun sila kalaki. Okay? So, ang kanilang founder is si Kemons Wilson at ang kanilang headquarters naman is matatagpuan sa Denham, United Kingdom. So, that is Holiday Inn. So, next one is the multinational corporations with operations in countries outside their main base or headquarters. So, ano ba yung sinasabi natin ng mga multinational corporation? Ito yung mga tinatawag natin ng na mga large hotels na sila mismo is nag operate all over the world pero meron silang pinaka-main base or pinaka-headquarters na kung saan, kumbaga, yun yung pinaka-original or yung pinaka-unang hotel na pinagtayuan nila. At dahil tinawag na multinational, ibig sabihin, hindi lang isang bansa yung meron na ganong hotels, kundi maraming bansa. So, these are the leading hotel groups. So, ma'am, ano-ano yung mga example ng mga multinational corporations na yan? So, example niyan is si Marriott International. ba? So, si Marriott is an American multinational hospitality company na nakabase sa Maryland. So, it was founded by J. Williard Marriott. Okay? At ang hotel groups nila, they own more than 6,000 80 properties sa loob ng 110 countries worldwide. And they have 1.2 million rooms as of December 2016. So, sabi ko nga, who knows ngayon, ba? Masyado na siyang nadagdagan or nadagdagan pa siya lalo. So, another example of that is Hilton. ba? Accor Hotels, Windham Hotel. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, ba? Si Microtel by Windham is also part of the Windham Hotel Group. We also have Hyatt Hotels Corporation. Ayan, Jinjiang International Hotel Management. Shangri-La Hotels and Resort. Diba si Shangri-La Hotel, it was based on Hong Kong, or in Hong Kong rather, but meron din siya dito sa Pilipinas. Sa Pilipinas, meron siya sa Cebu, meron siya sa Manila, meron siya sa Boracay, ba? So, ibig sabihin, it is a large hotel. It is a large hotel chain. Other example is the Melia Hotels International and the Intercontinental Hotel Group or the so-called IHG and the NH Hotel Group. So, I'll be sending you the information about this um, 10 or top 10 leading hotels in our Edmodo class. And of course, number 3 is the smaller multinationals which operate in a limited number of countries. So, kung may mga large hotels na halos lahat ng bansa is meron na silang um, let's say, meron na silang franchise, meron na silang um, na put up na hotels, meron din namang mga hotels na may mga countries lang na talagang dun sila nag-put up, may mga countries na hindi sila pinili. Okay? So, next one is the transnational strategies adopted by companies. So, ano ba ma'am pag sinabi nating transnational strategies? ba? From the word itself, transnational. So, when we say transnational, um, it is a action. Di ba? Pag strategy. It is an action or it is a plan of action na ang ginagawa natin, the business decides to conduct its activities across international borders. So, ibig sabihin, yung strategy na ini-implement ni Marriott Hotel, for example, sa kanilang headquarters, which is sa Maryland, is the same strategy na ini-implement nila dito sa bansa natin, ba? Kung may Marriott Hotel dito sa bansa natin, it's the same thing. So, yung mga plan of actions nila, it is being disseminated all throughout the international borders kung saan meron silang hotel. So, the strategies are example, ayan, yung nakalagay dyan, franchising its operation to other business in other countries, 
licensing other companies or premises to operate using its brand, logo, or trademark. So, yung gagamitin lang yung ating mga um, trademark. Entering into non-investment management agreements. Acquiring overseas properties and interests. Pursuing mergers to integrate business interests horizontally to operate in a number of countries. So, those strategies, um, we will further elaborate it sa mga susunod nating lesson. Kasi I'm sure na madidiscuss din natin siya. So, next one is the chain hotel. So, katulad na sinabi ni Ma'am kanina, when we say chain hotels, these are the hotels na talaga namang it is being group. Okay? It is being group. Ito yung mga hotels na talagang sama-sama sila. Um... And their goal is to provide, of course, to provide accommodation sa kanilang mga turista. So, according to the World Tourism Organization, global hotel rooms have increased from 14 million rooms in 1997 to over 17 million in 2005. And this growth has been pivotal in countries increasing their capacity to accommodate continued growth in domestic and international tourism. So, imagine ninyo kung gaano kalaki yung um, accommodation sector na to. Diba? Sa dami ng hotel rooms, of course, diba? Sa dami ng mga hotels, marlamang, marami rin talaga ang mga hotel rooms na kung saan umaabot na sila sa millions or even billions pa nga pagdating ng panahon. And dahil syempre yan sa mga investment, ba? Yung investment na yan, hindi lang naman ang gagaling sa private or sa public sector, but also from the private sector. And syempre, sinasabi natin dyan na kapag involved si private at si public sector, syempre andyan din si government. And si government, they're also providing mga incentives sa mga hotel developers na to. For example, bibigyan ng discount with regards sa tax or tax holidays, tax break. Ayan. Para na sa ganun, mas magkaroon ng encouragement yung mga investors. ba? Na mag-invest pa sa ating bansa. Mag-invest pa sa particular hotel na to. Okay? So that is chain hotels. So, what are the market for hotel segmentation or hotel accommodation? So, pag sinabi natin market, ito yung ating mga target um, target people. Ito yung ating mga target audience, kumbaga. So, sila-sila yung mga airline crews. Ayan. So, kayo, in the near future, if you became a... or if you become a flight attendant in the future, di ba? Maging piloto kayo in the future. So, isa kayo sa mga airline crews na magle-lay off sa iba't ibang bansa at magi stay sa mga hotel. That is why it is also very important for you to know what is accommodation operations and management. Because hindi naman natin pwedeng kaligtaan that without um without the destination or without the tourist accommodation, hindi rin naman mag stay ng matagal yung mga turista sa isang lugar. Yes, we have different tourist destination. Ang ganda ng lugar. Marami kang pwedeng gawin sa lugar. Pero, walang mapupuntahan yung mga turista. Wala silang mapagpapahingahan. So, what is the sense? That is why hotel accommodation, it's vital or it has become a focal point for the two industries. Next one is the conference delegates. ba? Mga conference delegates na yan, yung mga bisita natin na galing sa ibang bansa, ba? Kapag ASEAN, kapag may mga conferences na ginaganap sa bansa natin or sa ibang bansa, they're also checking in sa mga hotels na yan. Of course, government officials, mga tour groups, and other categories of travelers. For example, yung mga travelers na they are seeking for medicine, Diba? Meron tayong tinatawag na medicine tourism, sports tourism, mice tourism, what else? Mga cultural tourism na isa rin sila or part din sila ng mga travelers na ina-accommodate ng mga lodging establishments na to or ng mga hotels na to. Next one is the characteristics of accommodation sector. 
So accommodation has been conceptualized by some researchers as a product. This can be explained with the help of principal factors that can impact upon the way the product is constructed, portrayed, and sold to the customers. So, si accommodation, kinoconsider na natin siya as a product. Diba? Ang product or ang produkto is minamarket natin to. Diba? Minamarket natin to sa publiko, uh, ginagawa natin to ng mga strategies kung paano natin siya maibebenta, kung paano natin siya maia-advertise, kung paano siya ia-avail ng public. And of course, these products are being constructed, ginagawa, diba? ipinoportray, ipinapakita sa masa. And of course, it is being sold by the customers or binibenta natin sa mga customers. Example of that is yung pinanood ninyo, which is the episode 1 sa Amazing Hotels Beyond the Lobby, which is the Marina Bay Sands. So, as we all know, kung napanood ninyo yung buong video, Marina Bay Sands is one of the iconic hotel diba, na matatagpuan natin sa Singapore. Because of the, its architectural features, diba, ang ganda-ganda rin because they are known to be the world's largest rooftop infinity pool. Kumbaga, isa sila sa mga kinikilala na ito hindi lang basta hotel. It is an iconic hotel na sa mismong rooftop nila, di ba? Ang laki-laki ng rooftop, may matatagpuan kang infinity pool. And aside from that, it is also being award or isa rin sila sa mga award winning because of their restaurants, di ba? Ang dami nilang restaurants, mga dining restaurants. And inside the hotel, hindi ka lang basta pwedeng uh, mag-rest, mag-relax, but also you can enjoy shopping and other entertainment options. That is why it is considered as a product. Okay? Lahat ng ating mga accommodation, it is considered as a product that can be sold to the customer. So, what is the difference between luxury hotels and economy hotels? So, of course, pag sinabi natin luxury hotels, ito yung mga hotels na kung saan they are providing, okay, they are providing high quality services. Kumbaga, ito yung mga hotels na kinoconsider natin as a 4-star to 5-star hotels. Mga luxurious hotel. So, example of that is the Aman Pulo. So, Aman Pulo is located at the Pamalikan Island, Philippines. So, kung isa-search ninyo siya sa internet, yan, sorry, um, it is considered as a one of the well-known hotels or luxury hotels in the Philippines. So, si Aman Pulo, um, kung makikita ninyo, di ba, dito madalas pumunta yung mga artista. Yung mga artista nakakatapos lang ikasal, they are doing their honeymoon or they're enjoying themselves sa Aman Pulo. So, si Aman Pulo is basically a private villa or a private paradise island na accessible lang siya using a private plane. Okay? So, usually an hour, isang oras bago tayo makarating kung manggagaling tayo sa Manila. So, si Aman Pulo, ayan. So, sinasabi dyan na kapag nakapunta ka daw sa Aman Pulo, babalik at babalikan mo siya. Because sobrang ganda daw. How I wish, di ba? na makapunta tayo dito sa Aman Pulo. So, the Filipino word Pulo, which means island, was combined with the Sanskrit word Aman to give the resort a name meaning peaceful island. So, yun yung pinagmulan ng term na Aman Pulo. It means peaceful island. Okay? So, syempre si Aman Pulo dahil luxurious hotel siya, so, ibig sabihin, marami din talaga or yung kanyang price is hindi rin um, ganun kamura. Diba? If you already watched yung vlog ni Alex Gonzaga na nagpunta sila sa Aman Pulo, so you can check that out kung magkano yung presyo ng mga 
meals na kinain nila, kung magkano yung presyo ng rooms, ba? Diba? So, magiging aware din tayo. So, for the economy hotel, andyan si Hotel Sogo. So, of course, Hotel Sogo is located all over the Philippines. So, Hotel Sogo is a hotel chain in the Philippines managed and owned by the Global Comfort Group Corporation. So, it is owned by the Global Comfort Group Corporation. And of course, dahil nga siya is owned by a corporation, si Eurotel at si Icon Hotel is um, kasama din sa mga chains na to. So, kumbaga, kung sino may ari ng Eurotel at ng Icon Hotel, is siya rin may ari ng Hotel Sogo. So, currently, um, marami na silang mga branches, marami na silang mga franchises, and it is being um, constructed sa iba't ibang provinces ng Pilipinas. And of course, here, pag sinabi nating Sogo, kasi ba diba, Pag sinabing Sogo, ang iisipin nila, so clean, so good. But, meron pa siyang ibang meaning talaga. So, Hotel Sogo, ang kanyang meaning talaga is harmony. Okay? And, tinawag siyang harmony because it is adopted by the Japanese team. So, Japanese culture, Japanese team. Kaya, ang ibig sabihin sa kanila ng Sogo is harmony. Okay? So, those are the differences between luxury or economy hotel. Siyempre, sa economy hotel, medyo hindi ganun kataas yung quality na services na pinoprovide. Unlike the luxury hotels, the, the moment you arrive to the hotel until the departure, is talaga namang bonggang-bongga yung mga services na ibibigay nila sa'yo. Yes, meron ding mga services na i-offer sa'yo sa economy hotel, pero limited yung mga services. Kasi usually, sa economy hotel, ito yung mga budget-friendly hotel. Okay? Na sa abot ng ating makakaya is mga kapag check-in talaga tayo dito sa mga economy hotels na to. So, tourist accommodation is also characterized by a number of features described in below figure. So, ano ba yung um, way natin kung paano natin ikakarakterize ang isang tourist accommodation? Of course, it is being characterized by the price. So, kung luxury hotels yung gusto mo, Mas malamang, di ba? Mas malamang talaga yung presyo compare mo sa economy hotel. Location of establishment, of course, mas mahal ang mga hotel na situated along the city. Di ba? Mahal din naman yung mga hotel na located in the private islands. So, depende kung saan sila situated. Okay? For the facilities, so sabi ko nga, kung luxury hotels, of course, expect the high quality facilities na meron sila from the bedroom sa restaurant sa kanilang mga meeting room sa kanilang mga sport, sports facilities or yung mga gym nila so depende kung um, economy hotels naman um, yung kanilang mga facilities na ino-offer is of course yung mga facilities lang na normal nating nakikita sa isang hotel na ito is mako-convert into luxury kapag tayo is pinili natin yung luxurious hotel. So, service level, dependent upon the establishment, upon grade of establishment and price. Of course, di ba, kung pipiliin natin si 5-star hotel, kung pipiliin natin si 4-star hotel, iba talaga yung services na ino-offer nila. How would you expect na mag-check-in ka sa isang motel or sa inn na ang babayaran mo lang is 300, di ba? Tapos, ang matatanggap mo is 5 stars hotel services. Siyempre, hindi. So, depende yon kung ano yung service level na pinoprovide ni hotel. So, next one is ability to di differentiate the product to different customers and incentives to encourage key clients. So, how are we going to differentiate the product? Yung hotel ba natin is nag offer ng club membership or hindi? Nag-offer nag ba ito ng mga rewards para sa mga guests na talagang they are very loyal sa hotel na lagi silang nag-check-in? Because kapag tayo is may club membership, ibig sabihin meron tayo mga benefits na nakukuha sa hotel. Yung mga benefits na yon it's either meron kang discount kapag nag-dine-in ka sa restaurant, 
when you avail their spa and massage services, their transportation services, or whatever services that they are offering. And the last one is the image. So how customers view it through advertising and marketing media. Of course, um, ang isang hotel, they are building up their image, they are building up their reputation base sa services na pinoprovide nila. Siyempre, ang isang guest, di ba, ang isang client, kapag nagustuhan nila yung mga products and services, most likely they recommend it to other people. And alam naman natin that one of the most powerful marketing tool is the word of mouth. Diba? So, pag sinabi mo sa kaibigan mo na ang ganda ng services, they are very friendly, they are very accommodating. So, same goes. Yung friend mo, pwedeng ma-share yan sa iba pa niyang friends. So, those are the accommodation features. So, accommodation classification and grading is one of the most often debated and disputed topics in the hospitality industry. It is a popular misconception that an international standard for star rating actually exists. So, sa hotel, di ba, sa mga lodging establishments na yan, meron din tayong tinatawag na classification or rating. So, nababase sila kung sila ba is, let's say, 5-star hotel, kung sila ba is 3-star hotel, 4-star hotel. So, sila is nire-rate base sa mga services na ino-offer nila at base sa mga facilities. And of course, sa mga staff na meron sila sa hotel. Most likely, other hotels, um, they are being classified as deluxe. They are being classified as first class or tourist class hotel. And usually, ang two elements na in ini-include talaga natin dito is the quality of guest accommodation. Pagdating sa room, pagdating sa quality ng mga furnishings nila, and of course, yung extent ng hotel facilities. Yung number and size ng mga public rooms, yung mga meeting facilities nila, yung mga services na pinoprovide nila sa kanilang mga guests. So, ayan, as I mentioned a while ago, accommodation classification is the process by which accommodation establishments are being broken down into the following groups depending upon their common physical and or service characteristics. So, it can be based on their categories, grades, and classes. So, later on, we will also elaborate this um, characteristics. Next one is the other accommodation sectors. So, first one is the suite hotel. Ayan. So, a class of luxury accommodation is denoted by suite in a hotel or other public accommodation. So, pagka sinabi kasi nating suite hotels, these are the luxury hotels also. Okay? So, ang key, fe ang key feature niya is that it includes a multiple rooms. And sometimes, yung mga ibang mga properties or ibang hotels, they also have their honeymoon suites. They also have their presidential suite. Na itong mga suites na to is they offer multiple rooms. Of course, it is more spacious. May mga furnitures kang matatagpuan inside rather than a standard room ng mga hotel. So, aside from that, um, yung suite room, meron din silang living area, di ba? Na kung saan yung mga couches nila, it can be converted into a bed. Um, they also have dining, may office then, may kitchen facilities then inside the suite room. So, one of the example being mentioned here is the Okada Manila Resort and Casino. So, it is very um, popular nowadays and it is located in Seaside Drive Entertainment City in Paranaque, Philippines. So, si Okada Manila, ayan, kilala siya dahil isa rin siya sa mga casino na sikat. So, it is the Entertainment City's iconic integrated resort. So, yung mga guests dyan, they can stay, they can play, they can dine, and they can relax. Diba? ba? Kapag sila is nag-check-in dyan. And most likely, they have 993 lavishingly furnished accommodation options. ba? At bawat villa nila, it is 55 square kilometer deluxe room to 1,000 square kilometer villas. 
So, kumbaga, it is one of the five-star luxury hotels that we have here in the Philippines. So, that is Okada Manila Resort and Casino. Next one is the service apartments. So, ano naman si service apartment? So, service apartments are a relatively new addition to the hospitality sector. Extended stay accommodation is what it is called in America. So, sa America, sa US, ang tawag nila sa service apartment is extended stay. So, dito naman, um, the guests can stay for a weeks or months rather than days. Kasi, di ba, apartment. Ibig sabihin, it is um, being considered as a residential or a residence, di ba? Na dito matatagpuan natin na there is a one-bedroom unit or a studio. There is a small kitchen inside the room, a bathroom, and a living area. Okay? So, most likely, ito yung mga service apartments na malapit sila sa central business, business district, malapit sila sa mga parks, malapit sila sa mga transportation sectors. Okay? So, example natin dyan sa picture is the Makati Diamond Residences. So, it is located in, of course, Makati. Ayan. So, it is located in the center of commerce and business in Makati City. So, sinasabi dyan that aside from being the new standard of luxury living with its top-of-the-line amenities and health and wellness facilities, Makati Diamond Residences embodies true Filipino hospitality that is known worldwide with a dedicated team working together to create seamless experience for the business travelers. So, most likely, ang kinikater talaga nila is mga business travelers na nag stay for a few days, few weeks, or months, o yung mga turista na pinipili nilang mas mag-stay dito sa mga ganitong klaseng accommodation. And of course, Makati Diamond Residences, they have 410 luxury guest room na ang team ng guest room nila is European and Philly Okay? And of course, we also have timeshare. So, it is a form of ownership or right to use of the property or the term used to describe such properties is called timeshare. So, si timeshare naman, ito yung mga properties na meron talagang may-ari. Na ang ginagawa nila is they are willing to um, offer it to public na rentahan ng publiko yung property na to for a short period of time. Kaya siya tinawag na time share. So, each owner of the same accommodation is allotted their period of time. Na pwede nilang isell yung particular room or yung establishment nila sa kanilang mga guests. So, hotels are managed and operated under different systems around the World. There are many models including the mentioned or including those mentioned below. So we have here the independent owned and operated properties. We also have the chain affiliated properties, the chain owned and operated properties, owned and operated, chain operated properties which are independently owned and franchise properties. So depende, may mga hotels na they are being franchised or open sila for franchising. May mga hotels naman na isa lang yung may-ari. Okay? Isa lang yung nagmamay-ari or may mga hotels naman na it is being owned by a lot of people or corporation nga na tinatawag natin. So, franchising. So, hindi naman na iba sa inyo kung ano si franchising. So, a franchise is an arrangement in which the owner of the trademark trade name or copyright licenses others to use the same trademark, trade name, or copyright in providing goods or services. So, syempre, pag sinabi natin franchising, ginagamit natin yung pangalan ng hotel. Okay? Ginagamit natin yung copyright, yung trademark ng hotel, and same name pa din yung ating um, gagamitin. So, dito sa franchising, example niyan, 
Ayan, so 8 best hotel franchises in 2020, the Days in Super 8, Motel 6, Hyatt Hotels and Resorts. We also have the Hampton by Hilton, the IHG Group, Sheraton, and W Hotels Worldwide. So those are the 8 best hotel franchises last 2020. So the next one is the management contract. So, it is also one of the system um, na ginagamit ng hotel. So, it is often found in international tourism where a hotel chain can establish a presence without the investment of ownership. So, dito natin matatagpuan si IHG Group. Yung sinasabi ko kanina na it is the Intercontinental Hotels Group or in short, ang tawag sa kanya is the IHG Hotels and Resort. So, it is a multinational company, okay? Multinational hospitality company na ang kanyang um, headquarters is sa Denham, Buckinghamshire, or sa United Kingdom. So, most likely si IHG because dahil isa siyang multinational um, hospitality company, meron na siyang 889,582 guest rooms. Okay? And they have over 5,900 hotels across 100 countries. So, if you chose yung management contract, most likely ang mangyayari dito is that you will be given the supervision ng mismong company pa din. It allows you for the separation of ownership and operation. So, ginagamit dito... Um, sa international, yung management contract, ginagamit siya as a brand name para sa tinatawag nating marketing. So, yung franchiser okay, will provide the management team, tapos yung mismong hotel, it, um, they are being expected na mag operate sila under doon sa standard management practices. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung ano yung standards ni Hyatt Hotel, sa kanyang headquarters is the same standard na ipapractice or i-conduct ng hotel na to dito sa Pilipinas. So example of hotels that um, that has a management contract will be the Hilton, Hyatt Hotel Groups, the IHG, the Marriott and the Starwood Hotel. So marami pa sila but we can um, also search further um, if you want to know um, yung mga hotels na gumagamit pa ng management contract. Okay? So, the next one, ayan, so you can see here um, kung sino yung mga subordinates or subsidiary ng tinatawag natin na IHG Hotel. So, kanina nabanggit ko si Holiday Inn, isa siya sa mga subordinates ni IHG. Same goes with Regent Hotel, yung mga kilala natin ditong hotel like Crown Plaza, and what else? So, other hotels are known internationally. So, next one is the hotel staffing. So, this means staffing for hotels range from executive level positions such as general managers to unskilled positions at lower levels. But I think nowadays, we are no longer um, seeking for unskilled position kasi parang lahat naman ng trabaho requires skills. Lalong-lalo na ngayon, di ba? 21st century. Um, hindi na uso or hindi na natin pwedeng i-hire yung mga employees na wala silang skills or they are lacking of skills because we need people who can work on the company na makakatulong sila, di ba? Sa productivity and sa pagtaas ng performance ng company, not just um, sa profit na kikitain ng company. So, sa, host sa hotel staffing, of course, from the rank and file position up to the um, top management position, it is very important na yung kanilang mga description or yung mga kanilang mga job description, job qualification, and job specifications ay malinaw. Next one is the economic measures of accommodation operation. So, dito naman, dinidiscuss lang yung mga rates. Actually, we have a lot of rates na ini-implement sa hotel, but these are some of the few rates. For example, yung rack rate. So, when we say rack rate, ito yung official rate ng isang hotel room. O yung tinatawag natin na walk-in rate. So, when you go to a particular hotel, ba? 
mag-check in ka on the spot. So, yung rack rate nila, for example, for a standard room, they're offering it for 3,500. So, that is their rack rate. Pero, if, you, um, if you're going to book through online using Booking.com, Agoda, or Trivago, mas iba yung rate nila. Mas may discount. So, the next one is the discounted rates. So, discounted rates are offered to groups and other special categories. From the word itself, discounted. So, ito is binibigay natin sa mga VIP, yan, sa mga very important persons, sa mga government officials, sa mga companies na they are conducting their seminars or conferences inside the hotel. Actually, madami pa sila but we can elaborate it further sa ating mga susunod na discussion. And the last one is the occupancy rate. So, it is calculated by dividing the number of occupied rooms by a number of rooms available. So, those are the some of the economic measures na tinitingnan natin pagdating sa pag-operate at pag-manage natin ng ating hotel. So, for the current issues and future trends, so, these are the following um, consideration or yung mga issues na kinakaharap ngayon. So, the security and assets. So, sa security and assets, we all know that due to the pandemic, mas naghigpit talaga yung security and safety na pinapatupad sa mga accommodation and lodging establishments. So, sinasabi dito that some accommodation providers, notably budget hotels and holiday villages, experience little or no downturn as they are heavily reliant on domestic customers. So, syempre kapag ang pinag-check-inan mo is mga luxurious hotel, you have to expect na yung security nila is talagang mahigpit. ba? Pero it doesn't mean na kung mag-check-in ka sa economy hotel is, um, let's say, walang masyadong protocols na ipinapatupal. So, regardless of what categories of hotel ang meron ng isang company, dapat is yung um, pag-implement natin ng security and safety is the same pa rin. So, we should um, implement appropriate security measures. Kasi alam naman natin that whenever the guests feel or feels na hindi sila safe doon sa establishment, ibig sabihin, um, hindi nila magigain yung customer satisfaction. And alam naman, alam naman natin that kapag pumasok tayo sa isang establishment, alam natin na safe tayo, na, that we can enjoy our time while staying in that hotel. So, tiba mas tataas yung satisfaction level na meron tayo. So, next one is the technology and disintermediation. So, due to the trends of the ICT nowadays, it is one of the major significant aspects of the industry. Because sinasabi dito, we are now bound doon sa paghanap ng mga different channels, particularly the media. We are now advertising through a variety of media, not just television or radio, but of course also, di ba? We can um, direct email the guests. We can have a press release about the hotel. We can put up commercials or even hire ambassadors para i-advertise yung ating hotel. And of course, selling through travel agencies, central reservation offices. So, nung nag-OJT kayo before, you've experienced what are the different hotels being offered by that particular kind of travel agency. And the last one is directly mailed through each individual proper tea. So, si in technology and this intermediation. So, lahat ng mga hotels, they're being expected to cope up with the trend, lalong-lalo na sa paggamit ng mga system, such as the PMS and the CRS, di ba? Yung property management system and central reservation system na ginagamit sa hotel. Para ma-determine natin yung mga data na pumapasok galing sa mga guests. The next one is the design. Ayan. So, aside from the security, the technology, ang future trend ngayon or ang current trend and issues is about also sa design ng isang hotel. So, that is why yung ating 
video na panonoorin which is the amazing hotel's life beyond the lobby you can see the different designs of the hotel um, across the world na talaga makikita nyo they are putting up such kind of designs para nang sa ganun is para nang sa ganun is makasunod sila sa trend na gusto ng ating mga customers So the suggestion was that hotel success was now was now based less on where the hotel was placed but more on how it was designed. So yung design ng isang hotel especially kung yan isang boutique hotel, it is known to be as a luxury hotel, malaking impact yung design because the design will be the physical appearance of the hotel. The moment that you catch catch up the interest of the guests Diba? Malaking impact nun para piliin nila yung iyong hotel. Okay? So, those are the current issues and future trends being talked about here in the accommodation sector. So, that ends our presentation for today. So, if you miss some points here in our lesson video, feel free to um, replay this or even watch this again sa YouTube. So, thank you so much for listening in our today's lesson and hope to see you again next time. Thank you and God bless.